Okay, so now we're going to move on to um, actual game performance and what the new features of the PlayStation 5 Professional mean for all of that. And we're going to kick off with the element that's probably most contentious about it, which is the fact that the CPU isn't really changed at all from the base PlayStation 5. Um, this is slightly problematic because we have found a number of games where there are CPU limitations. Uh, I'm going to quickly cycle back to Game Boost, first of all, because um, the te there's actually a mode on PlayStation 5 um, Pro where developers can actually opt in to having 10% extra CPU clock. And uh, that comes at the expense of a little bit of GPU performance. Um, so I tested it in Cyberpunk 2077, which hasn't been patched, but this is the classic Cherry Blossom Marketplace run. Uh, it's not quite fully synchronized here, but you can definitely see what's happening. Running around that marketplace in a circle, uh, the frame rate dips beneath 60 frames per second, and the dip is considerably more pronounced on the uh, base model. Still not quite 60 on the Pro model, though, but you can look at the performance differentials there, and it's exactly in line with what you would expect from an extra 10% of CPU clock. So... Um, we can confirm that Game Boost isn't just boosting um, graphics performance. You are getting that 10% of extra CPU clock. Um, the other test I did, and this one is for a pro enhanced game, um, and that is Baldur's Gate 3, the classic city run. <laughs> um, Act 3, we've got a save that's like 100 hours in, and uh, we can actually do a run through the city. And you can see that um, on the left there, the base PlayStation 5, on the right is the Pro enhanced version of the game. We're still CPU limited, and you'll see that similar to Cyberpunk, the performance differentials are again in line with a modest bump to CPU clock. So, um, Oliver, I think this is probably the primary limitation. I mean, a lot of people are looking at PlayStation 5 Pro thinking, you know, should I give up my PC or, or, you know, should I stick with PlayStation and not move to PC? And I think the defining limitation of the Pro, which we've got to accept, is that um, even mainstream CPU performance now in the PC space is significantly better than the Zen 2 in the PlayStation 5 Pro. So you've kind of got to accept that limitation with the Pro, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a mid-gen refresh console, so the emphasis is obviously not on some of those more kind of fundamental areas of the console design, I would say, like the CPU. But here, um, I mean, right now, high-end PC CPUs are about twice as fast as the PlayStation 5 Pro's CPU. But I think what we're seeing in most titles nowadays are that target console uh, hardware is that basically they are mostly delivering 60 FPS. Like, I don't think we're in quite a, a cataclysm of uh, games that are, are failing to hit their performance targets on console. I think most games are basically there, plus or minus some stutters and issues like that. But obviously in titles like Baldur's Gate, obviously in some more CPU-limited games, like you mentioned with Cyberpunk in certain areas, you do run into some problems, and there the PS5 Pro will not save you. It might be good for an extra ten percent of performance, it but it's not you. going to. It's not going to save your performance. It's not going to be that kind of generational leap in CPU performance that would actually fix those problems. Yeah. Um, but the ten percent is nice. I mean, it's nice to have something at least. Absolutely, games that are slightly off their performance targets due to CPU limits yeah. will see a boost there. And you know, I yeah. honestly think that you should be running a VRR capable display if you can afford a $700 console. 